Yeah, welcome everybody for our uh, fourth uh, annual um, Invicro Software User Meeting. Thanks for, for coming here and also everybody that, uh, that joined us uh, online for today's session. We already had a great workshop uh, um, around uh, VivoQuant uh, scripting uh, yesterday, um, which many of you attended uh, that I heard was, uh, was very successful and um, was, was well received. And today we wanted to present to you a little bit of uh, of our work um, that we have done over the over the last year, as well as give you an outlook on what we as the software group at Invicra are focusing on, and uh, give a couple of our users also a chance to present on on their work, which uh, very likely have similar problems that that you have and used Invicra solutions um, to um, to to solve them. And I also hope that we have uh, a lively discussion about uh, things. So please ask questions. Uh, this is uh, also more like a workshop where we can also go into more details of things that are of interest to you. Um, so please feel free to, to come up with, uh, with questions. Um, we are also, um, yeah, it's not working yet. Yeah, we are also celebrating actually today, um, the, the 10 year anniversary of, uh, of Invicro um, to the day 10 years ago uh, was our incorporation of the Invicro <laughs> um, LLC. And uh, we, we are having some, uh, some, some internal celebrations also, but we also wanted to share this uh, with you. And we should have a drink on Invicro later at, uh, at the bar downstairs. I hope you brought the champagne or something. <laughs> so, um, and with this, um, I would like to pass on to, to Bill for the introductory talk. Thank you. Thanks, Christian. Um, and thanks everyone for joining today, uh, both in person and online. Uh, we are uh, excited for a robust discussion around, as Christian said, how users both internally at Invicro and, and externally uh, at Pharma and academic institutions are uh, collaborating with each other to solve these challenging data informatics problems uh, in an effort to answer these even more challenging um, uh, biologic questions and advancement of their drug development programs. Um, as a, you know, play on our 10 year uh, anniversary, I thought it'd be interesting just to look at how we got here. Um, our marketing group did a nice job kind of recapturing a, a brief timeline uh, history of Invicro. And you know, we've gone through a lot of change, um, or especially over the last couple of years. Uh, from acquiring companies, merging with companies, merging with groups, uh, uh, specifically around the scientific and operational capabilities of all these teams. And, you know, most recently with the acquisition by Vicro, uh, by KM, uh, really wanted to just highlight on a couple of comments on what that means moving forward for our users um, and all the scientists that we work with day to day. Konica, after acquiring both Amber Genetics and Invicro, uh, really set out to form a advanced precision medicine uh, group that is combining uh, world expertise across different bioinformatics, uh, quantitative biomarker disciplines, uh, from genomics, histopathology to radiology. And Invicro, as we uh, look at how we support and fit into that uh, platform, we really view ourselves as a key data analytics uh, technology driver of how to best leverage the uh, current practices in uh, managing data, viewing and analyzing data, reporting on that data uh, from a variety of different modality types, whether it be uh, a variety of modalities within radiology, uh, with Conor Camilta, we've been advancing into the histopathology space more, and how best we can collaborate with our Ambry uh, colleagues as well as I think the quantitative biomarkers at Pharma that are producing other data sets that groups are wishing to merge and to uh, uh, analyze in a cross modality uh, setting to answer these complex questions. And so the tools uh, and the people that we have organized across the enterprise will continue to form uh, into a group that will be made available uh, to you as customers from a a software deployed software standpoint, as well as the continued engagement we have with many of our customers in the pharma data analysis space for the contract research services we offer as well. So very exciting times uh, here at Invicro and uh, you know, we continue to make 
uh, investments in our company to stay at the cutting edge of how we think about data handling, data processing, um, and general data analytics uh, practices. And a little more specifics on in Vicro, uh, we continue to stay as a, a organization laser focused on uh, radiology and increasingly some histopathology based assays and the data handling uh, tasks, data processing tasks that come with that. Um, over, you know, what may have gotten hidden from the large acquisition from KM was us joining forces with the Minova team and their scientific group and operational capabilities, their site capabilities, uh, core clinical, who uh, uh, their team has a, a wide breadth of experience in late stage uh, imaging core lab services, particularly on oncology, but other therapeutic areas. And so the challenges that our software team and the image analysis group here at Invicro kind of jointly face to help support the wide array of different types of data, uh, again, from a data handling, data processing, data analytics standpoint, uh, are only getting more complex. And we're looking forward to uh, exploring how best to provide solutions, not just internally, but working with you uh, as well, as we certainly appreciate and enjoy all the scientific collaboration uh, with you as customers as we try to jointly build out these solutions uh, to meet each other's needs. And how we envision, um, you know, the future building and supporting the wide array of these types of data sets is really continuing focus on the core software platforms that we develop in-house. But I think you'll hear a, a great theme today of how our software technologies can be incorporated into a, a wider picture, uh, a larger footprint or ecosystem of different software tools for handling uh, these different types of data sets that may uh, fall within the radiology, histopathology category or uh, complement to such. So you may be familiar with this diagram of how, you know, IPAX currently uh, and VivoQuant as a platform handle a variety of different preclinical and clinical uh, data workflows, whether it's from a data sharing um, standpoint, data transfer standpoint, or from the nuts and bolts of viewing and analyzing the data. Uh, we continue to see IPAX as a core platform to manage and be a content management system for all things data related and imaging trial. Um, and how we see the roadmap building out is where we can make investments on improving integrations to not just our own software, but other tools that groups are using so that uh, IPAX continues to be a center hub of the wheel, so to speak, of how you think about managing your image data. With that being said, the current environment is very interesting in how the landscape is evolving of how groups are thinking about managing not just image data, but all types of data within pharma. And as you can maybe see from a few slides ago, even at Invicro and working with our AMBRI colleagues and our KM colleagues of how can we best think of IPAX as a component of a larger data management uh, strategy uh, so that groups, when you have this single question of, can I look at a correlation of uh, data output from a variety of quantitative biomarkers that the technology and the infrastructure is not limiting to how you're accessing that data, how you're interacting with that data, how you're analyzing that data. And so that is really a core focus and I think will be a theme of the year in how we work with groups, um, uh, our current customers, our hopeful new customers we don't know uh, yet, but hope to meet soon and, and even solve challenges internally um, and I think what continues to be such an exciting time at Invicro is the symbiotic nature between the problems that are presented to us through our contract research business um, and the problems that we interact with our customers using our deployed versions of software. Uh, we really see that line getting more gray in how we think about supporting these data handling, data processing, uh, data analytic challenges. And so uh, with that, I think, you know, it's a great way to set the tone for uh, many of the themes you'll hear in these talks today, um, I'll try to shut up quickly because we have a great lineup of speakers that will be touching on a variety of these topics. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think it's important, especially at a day like today, to really make sure that from Invicro, you realize how much we thank our relationships and our collaborative 
uh, time with you as our users um, and also our own team. So there's a lot of people here today, hopefully that, um, you know, uh, users, customers get a chance to meet. Um, you know, you see myself, TJ, Rhonda, Melissa has really been the main interface to you in a lot of these projects, but there's a, a huge team behind us um, that helps support a lot of the product development, the feature uh, development, um, general application support, technical support. And so it really, you know, I hope everyone gets an opportunity to, to interact with the entire team here that's uh, from our side. And then again, just we really should be thanking our users. You help drive our success. Um, so with that, you know, a little play on a, one of the first marketing campaigns we ever had at the company, uh, if anyone uh, caught it, uh, I think it was back in 2013, but it was highlighted by a phrase, see more. So uh, let's help each other see more today, one voxel at a time. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and thanks, thanks to all of you for attending today. Uh, FIBAQUANT 4.0 uh, has been released. Uh, announcement and webinar forthcoming. And we, and you can download it today if you'd like online on vivaquant.com. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the major uh, features and enhancements we've made uh, to this version. Uh, we did definitely did a little more than just update the splash screen. Uh, we went through uh, probably the biggest uh, update you'll see if you're a longtime VivaQuant user is in our uh, overhaul of the how we handle dynamic images. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback from our users uh, about how there are a lot of great analysis tools, uh, robust ones in, in VivaQuant. Uh, the, we were a little lacking in, in how we, uh, in our flexibility to handle dynamic images. It's a little hard to scroll through frames. Um, and, uh, and so we, we've cleaned that up quite a bit. Uh, so they both in, in sort of the DICOM compliance level as well as uh, in just the user interface. Uh, and it's fully integrated across the system. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more later. Uh, we also uh, made enhancements to our multi-atlas segmentation module, ultrasound module to which Ray uh, uh, had such a great uh, uh, presentation. Um, we've officially retired uh, the classic MIP for uh, opting for uh, the VTK MIP. So we've brought the VTK MIP both up to speed and actually uh, greatly enhanced its capabilities um, so that we don't really need uh, that confusion anymore, um, as well as uh, compliance uh, uh, with DICOM, including JPEG 2000 support and uh, a s brand new enhancements to, to CFT and our brain atlas module. So let me go into a little more details here. So uh, these dynamic imaging tools. Uh, so th this goes for uh, MRI, uh, so DWI, multiple B values, uh, multiple time points in fMRI, uh, multi-echo acquisitions, um, as well as nuclear medicine, you know, mul multiple binnings of PET and and, and lots of different uh, forms of dynamic imaging. Uh, we now load them as this uh, neat little tree structure in the data manager. Uh, we can, it's full, like I said, all fully integrated across the application. Uh, so all operators were, uh, were changed and improved. Uh, well, if, quick note, if you uh, uh, have, uh, you know, well, uh, streamlined workflows with with the old way of loading dynamic uh, data. Don't worry, uh, there there's an option for you to load it the old way and uh, make sure you don't break those workflows. And, and it's fully compatible uh, 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 like with old Vivo scripts and, and those sorts of things. Uh, one thing that uh, you'll see from these two videos is that it's extremely uh, much, or it's much faster to load uh, dynamic images now. Uh, sort of the, the infrastructure changes we made really uh, unlocked uh, just a lot of cleanup um, in, in our loaders, uh, in, in our UI, and, and you'll notice considerable per performance improvements uh, with that. And uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the app, we needed a nice way for you to 
that uh, you're easily able to kind of select images before. We wanted to make sure that was still the case. Uh, you can select kind of the entire dynamic series much more easily. Uh, you can select uh, uh, individual time points, multiple of them, single ones, uh, or, or single frames rather. And, uh, and this nice little widget uh, shows you uh, what the dynamic parameter uh, may be uh, and is fully VivoScript accessible. Uh, here's a quick side-by-side -side of the two. Um, instead of splitting those frames and, and saving them individually, uh, you get them all together. They share a nice palette by default. You can break it out into multiple uh, series if you so desire. Um, and at any point in the app, you can scroll that slider to see uh, the frame that you want to see. Uh, a little bit about DICOM. Um, so now we export in uh, using the enhanced DICOM SOP classes. Uh, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, but it does uh, uh, make, uh, add a lot of improvements. So we get a potentially more uh, resolution at the bit level with 32-bit data support. Uh, we get uh, faster transfer speeds. Um, uh, it, VivaQuan was already pretty good about sending um, uh, uh, or, or using the multi-frame module built in, uh, but now we do it in a slightly more DICOM compliant way. And, uh, and yeah, we can store uh, 40 uh, DICOM imaging data into one uh, single file, which is uh, uh, pretty convenient. Um, JPEG 2000 compression support allows you to uh, considerably reduce your data storage demands uh, from your images. And uh, we use uh, the implementation from OpenJPEG, so fully credit there. And, uh, and the compression is fully lossless, so you're not uh, going to lose any, uh, anything from your pixels if you save it this way. Uh, some great work from a collaboration with our image analysis folks here on the multi-atlas segmentation module. Um, so here uh, you'll also notice performance improvements up to two times faster, uh, lower memory footprint um, on your hard disk. Uh, the, uh, one of the reasons for that is we use uh, these chain transformations and uh, compute it all in memory, uh, getting it more up to speed closer to uh, you know, what you, you would get from the latest and greatest ANTS and, and ITK packages, uh, and, and, and generally enhancements such that we, uh, that we validated with uh, previous data sets and shown um, excellent overlap scores, uh, DICE overlap scores, uh, Jacquard index uh, between previous segmentations and new ones, uh, and in some cases even improved. Uh, a little on the on the maximum intensity projection. So if you've uh, uh, if you've seen it lately, there's there's quite a few uh, more uh, advanced uh, tools that you can use. Uh, for one, you can uh, save actually dynamic uh, movies of it now. Uh, you can uh, if you have a dynamic image. Uh, uh, you can export a nice movie for your presentation where the particular angle you have uh, scrolls through the frames of your image. Uh, we offer uh, red, green, blue uh, color rendering. So if you uh, are into any of our 3D um, RGB pipelines, including uh, cryofluorescence tomography, um, then uh, you'll be able to see those images in a neat uh, 3D way. Uh, as well as alpha and composite blending um, uh, approaches. So this lets you uh, do a number of different uh, uh, ways to uh, control the opacity um, of, uh, of your projection. So if you'd like to enhance, for instance, the skin or particular tissues or the bone, uh, and you know where those intensities lie on your, on your histogram, you can adjust uh, the transfer function to, to visualize to really make those pop in your in your projection, uh, as well as uh, uh, generally performance improvements here too. Um, if you're use, if you have a nice graphics card, not something old and integrated um, on a on an old laptop, then you should see uh, a really quick, snappy um, uh, MIP there. And so, with the retiring of the classic MIP, 
uh, we've added the uh, our, our proprietary uh, fusion algorithm to the VTK viewer, uh, allowing us to um, uh, kind of fully retire uh, the, the last great benefit of the classic MIP and there's no longer this confusion of switching back and forth. Uh, cryofluorescence tomography re reconstruction. Um, if you, uh, we offer this uh, as a service uh, through IA, through our lab as well, and uh, and there are a few sites out there that, that do this on their own, um, where we can uh, acquire from ex vivo a block RGB uh, white light images as well as uh, fluorescence images. Um, we can uh, then use automated using just a few seed uh, landmarks on the first slice, automatically detect uh, uh, co-registration fiducials across the block, uh, register those images slice by slice, uh, stack them up, resample them appropriately, and, uh, and align them across modalities to get multimodal 3D, um, uh, really high resolution uh, images that, that make for really neat uh, looking MIPS and neat looking uh, 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 analysis workflows as well. Uh, as part of that, we added a, a new operator, the splitting operator. Uh, you know, you could, uh, in theory, accomplish a lot of uh, 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 of multi-animal um, segmentation and separation with the cropping tool, uh, with some other tools, but it was a a little bit more of a hassle. The splitting operator really streamlines it for you. You can specify a grid um, either in 2D or 3D sections if you have a mouse hotel or, or what have you and manually uh, separate out um, these, these components of the image into separate series uh, uh, and, and allow you to uh, treat them independently after that. So you, you can name them, uh, again, fully VivoScript accessible uh, and uh, you can export these to uh, either directly into your data manager or to uh, uh, a folder on your computer. I won't go into the, this too much because the previous talk highlighted it really nicely, uh, but there have been enhancements to our ultrasound module, um, and the semi-automated tools that were alluded to, uh, some manual adjustment tools, uh, as well as a, a really nice uh, new uh, M-mode importer that allows you to see both the B-mode and the M-mode together so you can see better anatomically what M-mode section that you're, you're looking at in the B-mode time series. And uh, this morning, if you, if you missed it, we had a great talk from uh, Dr. Hesterman, head of R&D, about how it's used in our uh, clinical workflows um, just want to echo that here uh, that we do it, that we use VivoPont for image quality control, volumetrics, um, uh, semi quantitative oncology reads, uh, safety reads, ARIA reads, uh, as well as spectrosymmetry in the core lab. Uh, and, and the nice thing is uh, we have really built out our, uh, our, our 21 CFR Part 11 compatibility, compatibility here. Um, so we continue storing any changes we make to any images in, in the DICOM header using the derivation image description, uh, but we now also have the ability to hook uh, VivQuant directly into the IPAX logs where it can post all changes it made to images to the IPAX uh, uh, um, logs and, and, and audit trail there and have a full history of, of changes that were made to an image in a pipeline. Uh, I want to give some credit to different uh, open source libraries that we have used in the past and continue using and now upgraded to uh, some of the enhancements I mentioned earlier are directly from the upgraded. Many are not, but many uh, are, uh, are. So we, ha we use uh, Qt for our, our graphical user interface. Um, should show nicer compatibility with Windows 10 and, and uh, some of the newer Mac OS versions. Um, similarly, uh, our registration framework and segmentation framework um, from ITK uh, has, uh, has been improved and uh, lots of performance improvements from migrating to VTK7. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, 
the, we we have we support a number of more uh, private tags um, in our in our DICOM library, uh, thanks to the folks at Office uh, DCMTK. I want to give you a peek into uh, some of the future developments that we have in mind for VivaQuant. Uh, so uh, some of these are actually already done in a few alphas. Some of them are, are many of them are, are in the in the pipeline. Uh, but uh, improved kind of network transfers with the IPAX. Uh, you know, we've seen um, uh, in, with very, very large image data sets uh, with very large transfers, um, uh, uh, you know, depending on, the, there are many factors to a network transfer that, uh, that influence how fast it goes from one point to another, including uh, your internet connection speed, uh, uh, and at both at source and destination, um, as well as uh, the things that we can actually do to make it both more robust in the presence of a poor connection or um, faster uh, overall. And one of those is using chunk techniques, um, uh, as well as improving some of the progress indicator uh, issues in the past. Uh, we are actively working on um, uh, allowing uh, overlapping regions of interest in the 3D ROI tool um, and throughout the application. Uh, that's going to be a fairly uh, big change and um, should see a lot of neat new applications and visualizations possible in the tool. Um, we're going to continue working on, on the MIP, um, uh, color transfer functions, um, parametric surface renderings that will make, uh, should make some really beautiful images of CT bone analyses. Of, uh, as well as other um, more custom uh, tissue visualizations. Uh, and, uh, and some other things in the pipeline, uh, uh, cortical thickness uh, computation, um, stackable uh, matrix uh, uh, transforms from an overhaul of the reorientation operator that will allow uh, uh, chaining and, um, and storage and invertibility of, of transforms very much more easily than it currently uh, is in there, and as well as upgrading our, our uh, segmentation tools to include a number of region growing level sets and, uh, and perhaps even some uh, machine learning tools uh, that, that we develop in the future. And we'll continue working on, on more and more clinical workflows as that, as that work ramps up. And that's, uh, that's it for my talk. If there are any questions uh, or feedback, please, please let me know. Yes, sir. You mentioned an announcement about Great. It'll be nice to see those. Um, I've played with 4.0. I think it's awesome. I'm really pleased to have it. But I would love more um, sort of didactic manuals, more training materials, example things. Uh, is that forthcoming? Uh, that's a great point. Uh, we uh, were a little, uh, I would say, understaffed on the manual side. And I think that's where it's been lacking for a little bit. Uh, but we, uh, we do have a vision to improve that quite a bit. Um, uh, we, we have a little catching up to do on the manual and documentation side, I think. Yeah, that's fair, Bill. So you briefly mentioned about the CT volumetric analysis tool. Would that include any morphometric analysis tool for CT? Uh, that that is one of the ones. Uh, yes, in the in the pipeline, we're thinking uh, mid. 2019 for that, I think. Um, this is highly specific to the ultrasound platform. Um, Please go ahead. I'll try, I'll try my best. <laughs> I was just curious. Um, I know you guys are integrating both the M mode and B mode into 4.0. Will we be able to run both simultaneously while B mode's running in the background? Will we be able to analyze short axis images as well? So the, uh, the both simultaneously uh, I, I th uh, maybe Yana can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can do that through multiple instances of VivaQuant, running them together. 
uh, running simultaneously on your computer. There's no reason why we can't do it that way, I think. Uh, short access, I don't have the answer to myself unless someone else in the room might know. One idea, though, that was discussed uh, yesterday, just to uh, put more pressure on our developers, is um, the uh, IPAX team and VQ team that got together a couple years ago and looked at how to run headless VQ processing tasks uh, within the IPAX. So the B mode processing tasks, I figure out because it um, could be a candidate for that because you know, you're staging up your data for selecting the end diastolic and systolic frames and then letting the segmentation um, identify the uh, area volumes. So that, that might be a way to run to be more efficient with analyzing both data sets at once since the B mode for sure is more of a headless task. So we're actively looking into it because another customer is pressing hard to have the certain VQ tasks run within IPAX. Uh, that might be a good next step for you guys. Sorry if I no, committed you. us too much right there, but. We have, a, we have some proof of concepts of uh, running VivoQuant uh, on the IPAX. The, uh, details are still to be worked out, um, and uh, hopefully that'll come come soon. Do you think it'd be possible to extend the analysis to the process? Definitely, I, th I think so. Uh, yeah, I think we should talk about it more. So I have a question. It seems to me that there's a more GPU-based processing in new version. So do you have any recommendation or request for the computer hardware? Uh, we, uh, I, can't, I can't remember what our exact uh, current recommendation is. Uh, I think it is documented somewhere. Uh, but I, I've had a good experience with uh, not, nothing too crazy, but at least a gigabyte of uh, of GPU RAM or GPU memory, um, and uh, the mo most of the latest cards, it, as long as they support uh, you know OpenGL, I think it's three point six and up, uh, will will do a good job with uh, with VivaQuant. Yeah, uh, the it's it's typically um, a lot of laptops with these like Intel ed integrated graphics that don't really cut the cut the mustard for for most of what you would want to do. Thank you very much.